What's up, guys? Welcome. I have not put a video on YouTube for about a week. I have definitely been shadow banned on this app, and it was just really depressing because my uh, account was barely uh, off the ground. So I was getting a lot of growth. Then I got a violation, which led to no reach and all my views, my followers plummeting. Uh, yeah, not being recommended. So it is what it is. I'm kind of just recording this to put there and actually we'll be putting it on the Rumble platform as well. So if you're not following me there, please give me a follow there as uh, I don't think I'll run into as many issues over on Rumble. Uh, as a lot of creators are finding, the censorship is so high and um, we don't really know what it is that we're actually breaking here on YouTube, I, the guideline that I supposedly broke, it was very vague and I don't even know exactly what part of my video was the thing that sent them over the top and, um, you know, sent my whole account set on this derogatory status. I'm just going to roll with it and uh, stop getting bogged down in the depression of like, you know, building something up only to see it, um, the rug kind of pulled out from under you on something you just have no fucking control over. Um, so I wanted to chat with you guys today. Um, right now, uh, the thing I wanted to talk about was the makeshift border wall that they're building in Arizona with shipping containers. And apparently the Biden administration is trying to, um, sue them so that they can't do this anymore. It's, it's baffling. It's very strange. I'm not really sure, um, what their the Biden administration is going to try to accomplish by suing them from trying to keep their stay safe when the government refuses to do it for them. Joe Biden doesn't think that the border is an issue. He doesn't think it's important. He doesn't think it, I mean, because we'd rather protect Ukraine's border or Africa's border for that matter. There's so much building to this omnibus plan um, to protect all these other borders except for our own. So they've really, really showed us that they just don't give a fuck about the fentanyl coming in. They don't give a fuck about the crime coming in. And this is not me saying that all of these people are, you know, bad people. Clearly there's people seeking asylum. Get it. Totally get it. But right now there's hundreds of people just sitting on the other side of a river waiting for the release of Title 42 where they can just bolt across this river. Hundreds of people. That's how much this surge is going to have an impact on us. It's going to be, I mean, I believe it was last weekend was the highest border surge we've had thus far in history. Uh, as soon as Title 42 is actually let up, we're going to see numbers coming in droves like we've never seen before. And with those asylum seekers, there will be cartel, there will be trafficking, there will be all these other bad elements in the mix. And the problem is that they're not able to figure out who is who. They're not vetting these people. Half of them just get away. They, they um, rush over the border, they don't check in, they don't seek asylum, and then they just try to get lost in the system. And the ones that do, a lot of times they're given a court date, then they're released in the system. That court date's five years in the future. You think they're never going to show up for that. Why is the Biden administration looking at the fact that they're building this border wall and their own? it's their own state money, it's their own taxpayers' money, it's not federal grants, federal money, the that basically the government doesn't have to do anything. They're doing it in Arizona, just like Abbott decided to take some steps in Texas to do similar things, fill in pieces of the wall and such. Why are they fighting against this unless they want these people to surge over the border? It makes no sense to me. It makes sense to me for him to keep dodging and being, you know, sketchy and and whatever, because he wants to send money to Ukraine to be washed and laundered back to himself or his fucking son, the smartest man that he's ever known. Um, I mean, who knows exactly what's going on there? But um, it, it, to me, is not making sense why he's not okay with them building this wall unless he wants them to flood over the border. So that's that. Um, one of the other things that I guess I just wanted to talk about, I had actually done a play-by-play because -play I kind of played that while it was happening, was the whole Zelensky um, 
press conference that he had with Joe Biden. But then I've recently seen some extra things afterward where they were kind of showing like where he just went to Congress. And I have just got to say that Nancy Pelosi's behavior specifically, I don't use the trendy words often, but it was fucking cringe, you guys. Like, I get why the kids say it now, because what she did made my butthole pucker. Like, my butthole climbed up inside itself out of embarrassment for how she acted to Zelensky. Like, just, like, slap, smacking the gavel like a fucking fourth grader and, like, leaning in, like, just that gross old grandmother that, like, tries to get too close and smell you and sniff you and fucking slopper all over you. Like that's what she was doing with him on national television. And it was just like, so peculiar to me. They are acting like this guy is a fucking Marvel character. Like he's literally the savior of the earth or something. Meanwhile, I don't mean to be an asshole here, but he's a sketchy motherfucker. Okay. So we don't know half of the shit, the sketchy shit that's going on in Ukraine. And this is not me saying that we shouldn't be somehow providing something to Ukraine, standing with Ukraine in some concept of the word, but not at the risk of all of the American people that are taking a, the fucking shaft in the back seat, knowing that we're sending trillions of dollars, I believe at this point, if not, it's getting near trillions um, over to Ukraine not fully feeling positive on the fact that it's not just being laundered or going to his own bank account or somehow back into the Biden family's account. Who knows? But there's so many different conspiracy theories like lurking out there. It's really hard to get on the right side of anything with so much propaganda going on. But just me being an outside the box thinker, not knowing like the ins and outs of like foreign policy and what's possibly going through Joe Biden's brain or whoever's pulling the puppet strings and making the decisions like whoever's going that's going through like the things that I've kind of heard that I don't really understand is okay so to me this is a proxy war right basically we're using Ukraine to fight our enemy which is Putin right that that's kind of what it looks like we're funding the war we're giving him not the, giving them artillery we're giving them missiles we're giving them the things that they need to fight this proxy war while saying we're standing out of it. However, are we going to escalate things? Well, I mean, I dare say if we send them a Patriot missile and they can fly that into Russia, that to me looks escalatory. I'm a little bit concerned that this motherfucker over in Russia has not got like one finger on the fucking nuke ball. Like just saying, like if we escalated over here, he might just say, you know what, F Ukraine, and then just hit the button. And like, bye bye fucking Florida, bye bye California. I mean, I don't know. I just, and I'm sure, and, and I don't live in fear, honestly. I, I kind of live in oblivion in a sense, in that I, I hear all these crazy conspiracy theories, or even not even crazy conspiracy theories, but you hear Joe Biden himself say we're on the brink of third world, uh, world War Three. <laughs> you know, it's like kind of like fear language, right? So you just try to play the tape forward a little bit. And it's not that I believe that that's actually going to happen or that we're going, we are that close to World War III or that Russia is going to nuke the United States. I think he is a smart enough man to understand that the second that he pushes any of those buttons, he's going to be gone. Like, unless he blows the entire United States up, the man will be decimated from the map. I think he is aware of that. So that being said, what was just so peculiar to me was just like the way, first of all, Zelensky was like, now this is not charity. Yeah, motherfucker, it is. It is fucking charity. You are going to another country and asking them for literally everything you need. Everything. Like we are your fucking sugar daddy. Yes, we are. We have literally given double the money than the rest of the world put together at this point. That's what we've given to Zelensky. But he comes over here and we award him a flag and he gives us a flag that looks like a fucking yearbook signing. It is the just most peculiar adult behavior I've ever seen in my life. Like I'm all for a, like an award ceremony and like awarding people medals of honor or awards that they truly, truly believe. But I, I, maybe I'm like just like, 
an asshole here, but like, I don't believe the guy's on the front lines. I really don't. I believe he's doing photo ops and he's making it look like he's on the front lines. I believe his optics, he used to be an actor. Like, I mean, I get that he is putting this propaganda out there that's making it look like he's, you know, just fucking king shit on Turd Island here. And like the rest of the world is supposed to just like, I mean, it was just so fucking embarrassing and weird. And then Joe Biden called them Iranians at one point, And I was just like, are you fucking kidding? Me? Like, really? You can't through Ukraine, Ukraine. You're talking to fucking President Zelensky of the president of Ukraine. And he calls them Iranians. Like, and it's just like, you know, since he's sitting there going, oh my God, this fucking old turd, just give me the fucking check and let me get the fuck out of here. Yeah, like, like I didn't even dress up for you, bro. I have so little respect for you that I literally came in the same fucking clothes that I slept in because I was just like, yeah, fucking three days on shower, don't give a fuck. No, I'm going to meet Joe Biden. He probably just shit his pants. So, um, you know, like there's already flies. They're going to be on his ass. They're not going to be worrying about my three day on fucking washed wrinkle ass. I have absolutely no respect for your country. Now give me my fucking money. He's like a Gen Zer. That's literally what's going on right now. Like Zelensky is like fucking these Gen Z kids. Like, I'm just going to call like, Hey mom and dad, like fucking, I know I live under your, your roof and like, I don't do dog shit to contribute to this household, but yeah, I'm going to need some um, extra money to buy a few more s squishmallows um, because I'm 25 and I obviously need a stuffed animal collection. Yeah. So um, just, just give me the money, right? Because I deserve it just simply for existing. That's how I feel like Zelensky looks coming to President Biden and being received like fucking creepy Nancy Pelosi with her Skeletor hands and she's just reaching in and, and almost keep making sure her teeth doesn't fall, can fall out so that she can snuggle and rub cheeks with him. It was the most uncomfortable fucking thing. Oh my God. Maybe I'm just, it's maybe it's because I'm a little bit strange. I'm not a touchy feely person. I'm not even a hugger until like you have entered my like circle of friendship and trust. That's when you'll get a hug from me. I'm not a hug, any random fucking person that I meet kind of person. Like when you get a hug from me, like, you know, that you've just like become VIP in my, in, in my world. Right. So this was like just, yeah, it was just creepy. And, you know, Kamala Harris, thank God she didn't fucking speak or maybe she did and I didn't hear it. But let's just also talk about Mitch fucking McConnell. So Mitch McConnell, first of all, you old fucking basset hound. You, nobody fucking care. I don't even understand how this man is still in office. He is like the, the worst part of our party, except for maybe Lindsey Graham. I literally dislike them both almost equally at this point. But he stood up and made a, a comment speaking for all of Republicans that I don't feel is true. Just straight up fucking lie as far as I'm concerned. And basically said that to Republicans, the most important thing to Republicans is funding Ukraine and making sure Zelensky has everything he needs for this proxy war. Okay. Now, maybe there's a portion of you in the Republican Party, the Senate, who feels this way. I don't think that it, you're speaking for the majority of the Rep Republican Party leaders, and you're sure as shit not speaking for Republican Americans. I, I, I mean, I'm not to me, like a completely like loss of empathy here. Of course I care about human life. Of course I care about Ukrainian human life. Of course I hear, care about anybody who is innocently harmed, but not at the expense of America first. I'm sorry. I just don't. And I'm, I dare say 80% of regular Americans are going to rank this Ukraine war, like probably on the bottom of their list of priorities and things they give a flying fuck about. It's going to be inflation, like it like hit your pocket things, maybe crime, the border surge, the fentanyl coming over the border, especially if you have children, um, you know, especially in the ages of like 11 to 18, um, you know, trying to study all night for a test, thinking you're taking an Adderall and then you never fucking wake up. Like that's the shit that's happening and that they're turning a blind eye to. It is absolutely ridiculous, but we're going to fucking, yay. Yeah, hey. 
yay, Zelensky, you are just like, we're going to have, we're going to like fly your flag, not the American flag, but we're going to fly the Ukrainian flag. Meanwhile, Ukraine does not even believe in any of the fucking shit that they're shoving down our throat over here. So over here where we are getting like just trans jammed down your throat, LGBTQ rights that they've had for quite some time, but now we need to renew them to make it look like Joe Biden has done something new, but like they could always get married. Anyhow, shoved down our throat. Racism shoved down our throat. These things are just, you know, the biggest things that are going on in the world right now. All of these things. Over in Ukraine, they are not pro-trans anything. They are not pro-LBGTQ. They cannot get married over there. They are, they're quite racist, to be perfectly honest, when they were actually um, letting the refugees, like getting them out of the country, there was like rules, like black people had to go last. That's fucked up, guys. But you stand with Ukraine. Do you know who you fucking stand with? You, you're not like this Zelensky guy, like we're trying to portray him like he's some fucking white savior warrior. He doesn't support all this ideology that y'all are fighting for. So right now it's just cool to to virtue signal and be a, you know, social justice warrior for Ukraine. Meanwhile, you are propping up and giving the, you know, rainbow fist to somebody who does not subscribe to your ideology. And if you lived over there and you were like gay or trans or whatever, you wouldn't have no rights, but you stand with Ukraine. Make it fucking make sense. Make it make sense. I, I, I do not understand it's not that I believe that liberals are stupid. I do not believe that because I know some really, really fucking smart people who vote liberally and have liberal beliefs. It's just that I don't even think that they think through the hypocrisy of a lot of the things that they do. But, you know, I digress because honestly, they think the same thing about our, our party, I'm sure. I'm sure they can pick things apart and personalities apart and find hypocrisies in you know, a lot of things that we believe as well, because let's just be honest, especially when it comes to politicians, hypocrisy lies on both sides. Corruption lies on both sides. At the end of the day, when all the cards fall, when we maybe get some investigations into all this bullshit that's going on, whether it's the Biden family and the laptops, the Twitter files, possibly delving into what's going on with Google and all these other platforms and how much the FBI or the CIA or, you know, are, are being, you know, used as a an arm of the government. Maybe we find all that out. That would be fantastic, right? Probably nothing will end up fucking happening. We'll spend two years fucking talking about it, wasting tax dollars. Meanwhile, inflation still skyrockets. Nothing fucking changes because Republicans didn't have a plan. They just thought that if they pushed down the throats of the Americans, that they were going to find out about the laptop that people would be like, yeah, justice is finally served. No, they want justice served when their fucking pockets are lined a little bit deeper, where they're not literally sticking their hand in their pockets and sticking their fingers through fucking holes where they've realized all their money has fallen out. Like that's, that's the world we live in right now. Holy shit. you like, like checking coach cushions back. Like it would, like it's 1980 looking for gas money, which might barely get you, you know, a snot hair. Of, of gas at this point, but fucking give me, I, I just, I don't, I don't understand. Like it, it's, it just feel like politics on both sides are so bleak right now. I'm just not seeing a whole lot that's positive. I mean, I want to be excited over the fact that we are taking over the house, even by a slim margin. That's still, that's still positive, right? Nancy Pelosi's fucking out. Skeletor has been laid to rest. Uh, that's a positive thing. Yeah, I'm feeling positive about that. I just pray to God that they do not split our um, party in half over this fight over who should be speaker. And that isn't to say that I'm over here thinking McCarthy is like the perfect guy for the. I, I, I don't, I'm still learning so much about all of this. I don't even know if I believe that he's fully the answer, but I don't know that it's the wisest choice to go against him and split the party. So I'm, you know, I, more is going to unfold in my opinion. I'm sure will change throughout watching this process happen. Um, I just, I think my biggest concern is I, that I heard that if we don't choose him as speaker and it comes 
um, that he doesn't get the support he needs, that the, the, it actually goes to the de Democrats to be able to pick Speaker of the House or something like that. And they could possibly pick somebody who is more likely to always vote with them. And that could be really, really detrimental to anything we want to do over the next two years. So I don't know if that's true 100%, but that is something that um, I had kind of looked into as to, because I was trying to figure out like, okay, is, is McCarthy a good call? Is he not a good call? I heard he didn't really get behind some candidates that he should have gotten behind and maybe would, would have done better during the midterms, you know, but like he was kind of distancing himself from some of the Trump backed people, which ended up being some of the people in the states that were the most imperative that we were to get that seat. Had they just come behind him? Yes, you could say. Not maybe not like the highest caliber caliber of um, candidate, possibly, but they're the candidate we got. And if you really cared about the Republican Party and getting behind it, you would have gotten behind whoever ended up being the nominee, not picking and choosing who you were going to put your money behind. You literally fucked us in the ass. Like we want to say that, it, oh, it was this, the voting mess and something wasn't right. And God only knows there was all this illegal things that happened, which to this point, I'm not saying they have or they have not happened, but we don't have consistent proof. You know what we do have proof of? What they do, ballot harvesting, all these things that they're doing is legal in most of the states that they're doing it. So instead of bitching, whining, and complaining about it, Republicans get fucking better at playing the game. Play them at their own game. We need to be doing what they're doing so that we stand a fucking chance or we'll never win another election. <sighs> Guys, I don't even know what just happened. I just had an utter body experience. I just literally jammered on for fucking 20 minutes about I'm not even sure what because I went from one topic to the next. So I hope that some of this made sense in some way and somebody like tuned in and was just like, oh my gosh, either maybe I haven't thought about it that way or yeah, go girl, like you, you get me, I feel you. And then maybe you're looking at me going, bitch, you crazy. Bitch, you fucking crazy, you conspiracy theory, tinfoil hat wearing nutcase. I, you know, at the end of the day, your opinion of me doesn't really matter. It's none of my business. And uh, yeah, so if you're here for it, fucking awesome, man. But if you're not in, uh, you know, this wasn't for you, give me a comment as to why I hate just like blanket statements like you're stupid, you're ugly. Those are not helpful. So give me some positive or negative feedback, but just give me a dang like fact after the insult. If you're going to insult me, by all means, if you fucking think I'm, a, I'm, I'm, I'm stupid, that's cool. But say, I think you're stupid because you just seem uneducated and let me educate you and then back it up with some fucking facts. Or it's just an empty insult, which really just shows who you are, <laughs> not who I am. Because I was brave enough to get on here and just blurt out my opinion, not caring who I'm going to offend or if you're for it or if you're not for it. So by all means, when you comment, like put some substance into the comment or don't fucking waste either of our time. Okay. Thank you. All right, guys. Um, so if you were here for it, please give it two thumbs up. Show me some love. Maybe it's possible to break out of a shadow ban. Not really sure. I'm really bummed if I got to start a new channel because I feel like they have facial recognition. And like, if I start a new channel, then that will just, you know, be dead in the water as well. So maybe just move into rumble. So hopefully maybe you're even watching me on rumble. So give me a rumble. I guess that's what it is. Not a like it's a rumble, um, a comment and help me figure out the dang, uh, algorithm over at rumble just by, interacting. I think you'll start to boost and make me relevant of some sort. So again, I love you guys. Thank you so much. If you've been following me since TikTok, you rock. If you just found me, you fucking rock too. Um, let's uh, keep doing this journey together, guys. Let's keep opening people's eyes. Let's keep standing up because it always feels like I'm just one voice. I'm not going to do anything, right? But you're just one voice until someone else hears you and then they go, wow, she was brave enough to stand up. I'm coming behind her. And then another woman hears her and she goes behind her and then another man hears them and then he's there. And then before you know it, you turn around and there's a flipping army of patriots behind you. Yeah, that's what happens. So when you think you're just one, you're just one in this little area and you can build your little army and then we can all just spread our word.
and just tell people at the end of the day, guys, just open your eyes and question everything. This isn't a right or wrong thing at this point. Well, it is kind of the battle of good and evil, but this isn't me saying I'm right and you're wrong. This is me saying, just ask questions, okay? Just ask questions. Think outside the box. Use a little bit more common sense and less being led by somebody else telling you what to think. Anywho. All right, guys. You fucking rock. I will see you when I see you.